The rise of consumerism and the credit boom of the 1920s, though not the single cause of economic instability would eventually play a major part in the stock market crash of 1929 and that would lead to the eventual Great Depression. Many people tell you that the Great Depression started with the stock market crash in October 1929, but A, that isn't true, and B, it leads people to mistake correlation with cause. <laughs> there was a notion that the United States had entered what they called a new era of economic development. That the old rules of what went up would eventually come down. That those old rules no longer apply. They bought homes, they bought cars, and especially they bought stocks, in large part on the basis of borrowed money. That sense of there is no limit and that all this this expansion, this success, this elan, um, we're not really going to have to pay for it. Now, of course, that didn't turn out to be true. You could Economic conditions in the U.S. before the stock market crash weren't all moonshine and rainbows. The 1920s featured large-scale domestic consumption of relatively new consumer products, which was good for American industry, but much of this consumption was fueled by credit and installment buying, which, as it turned out, was totally unsustainable. The thing about credit is that it works fine unless and until economic uncertainty and Increases, at which point that's a technical historian term by the way and it was economic instability and the average American citizens dependence on credit to fuel the consumer boom that would cause mass financial chaos on that fateful day in October 1929 however citizens of urban areas were not the only ones who were facing potential disaster leading up to the crash as those in the agricultural community were dealing with their own financial debts due to credit. All through the summer of 1929, there had been ominous rumblings. For months, unemployment had been rising. Automobile sales and department store revenues had fallen off sharply. Across the South and West, Farms were failing in record numbers. And other signs of economic weakness appeared throughout the decade. Like by 1925, the growth of car manufacturing slowed along with residential construction. Meanwhile, the agricultural sector suffered throughout the 1920s and farm prices kept dropping for two reasons. First, American farms had expanded enormously during World War I to provide food for all those soldiers. And second, the expansion led many farmers to mechanize their operations. As you'll know if you've ever bought a tractor, that mechanization was expensive. And so many farmers went into debt to finance their expansion and then a combination of overproduction and low prices meant that often their farms were foreclosed upon. According to historian David Kennedy, by 1929, commercial bankers were in the unusual position of loaning more money for stock market and real estate investments than for commercial ventures. I wonder if... It was this practice that caused the stock market to cost thousands of American families billions of dollars. This massive loss would close businesses, which cost people jobs, which led to massive unemployment that would eventually lead to the Great Depression. But, but let's remember. Many people tell you that the Great Depression started with the stock market crash in October 1929, but A, that isn't true, and B, it leads people to mistake correlation with cause. 